this is it guys the old dodge is getting a paint job this weekend so we're going back to black uh, started taking the mirrors off and stuff today and yeah, i gotta take these emblems off still but gonna respray some base we're gonna do seal coat base and clear stay tuned Well, I got her in the garage and uh, working on removing the emblems, the mirrors, rubber molding around the windows. I haven't done that yet because it's going back in the driveway tonight because tomorrow I'll be sanding and getting ready for sealer. But it's supposed to rain tonight, so I don't want it to be sitting out there and potentially getting water in it. But uh, got the grill out, headlights out. I'm going to spray that bumper cap in place. Uh, still got to remove this emblem, these emblems. Door handles are off. And as I'm doing this, I'm, because the truck is still shiny, it's easy to see where there's some dents and where I might need some body filler, like I see a little area right here. Um, years ago, I was T-boned in this truck. It hit this, uh, right behind this door seam, the mega cab part was pushed in about six to eight inches and so was the front half of the bed. So uh, it's been in the body shop before. So that's why this paint actually looks better than the rest. But that's the update so far and uh, I'll show you guys the back. Um, all this has to come off. The cab guard's got to come off. But um, took the, the old ram head off and the tailgate handle. So tail lights are next. I forgot to mention a little more detail about my old ram. It's a 2006. Um, it's a West Coast truck. We're here in Indiana right now. And it's the only truck I've seen so far that has not been rusted out above the rear fender wells. But... One thing I wanted to go over, it is not a 5500, obviously it's a Hemi 1500 Mega Cab. Um, removing these emblems, I thought I could get a piece of fishing string. I had some 60 pound tests and I, I strung it back behind there and tried to saw it back and forth to cut that adhesive. But apparently it's just too, too aggressive to remove that adhesive without melting the fishing string. So. Uh, next best thing is the old plastic pry uh, body, interior body panel tool. I spray this down. I was using WD-40 on the other side just to give it some slickums. But I just used uh, Goo Gone on this one. So that's the only way I could figure out to get these off. And then getting the glue off behind it, I've been using just a razor blade. And it scratches the paint a little bit, but I'm going to do the body work on that anyway. So anyway, just wanted to share that. There's my uh, liquid of choice there, Goo Gone. Just a cheap old razor blade with a holder. And I've noticed it, I don't know if this is just my brain telling me this, but it seems like every razor blade has a preferred side where it will slide better. If you flipped it over, it actually digs in. So I don't know if it's sharpened at a different angle, but um, I spray it all down and then just get this under the edge and slowly work down through that adhesive and it I just work my way from top to bottom um, once it starts to feel like it's getting a little dry give her a little more of that stuff and just continue it takes patience but I mean as you can see it's taking most of that glue off and this stuff is like a closed cell foam so that label remover is not penetrating it so you re really you can't just spray it and walk away and think that you can come back later and it'll fall off so this is really the only thing you can do is mechanically remove it but that's that after that i got the uh mega cab one to take off and that's it on the emblems
day two of the old RAM project here. Um, right now I'm focusing on removing, well I removed the bed caps yesterday, but my god this, this adhesive is some NASA stuff. Um, I did have a little hack I learned that I wanted to share with you guys, but I didn't do it at the time because it's just two hands. But when this aluminum was on here, I stuck a pry bar under here and I was afraid I didn't want to dent it. And it was taking quite a bit of force to actually get this glue to release. So I took a map gas torch and heated the aluminum. Just walked back and forth and heated this up till the aluminum actually turned to a brown color. And it was rolling some smoke out. And then this, the glue kind of released a little bit. Well, it separated and it came off probably a lot, lot easier than if you didn't have it. But, so on this side, I wanted to show you guys, uh, I was doing the razor blade trick here with the adhesive remover, just kind of sawing it back and forth as I walked that glue off. And then my, my mind came to this awesome idea. Um, I got this Harbor Freight vibrating saw and I keep my old dull blades because I sharpen them. And I just threw that, and it won't focus, but I just threw that old sawtooth blade on the angle grinder and just put an edge on it. I only sharpened from the bottom side, not the top, which would give me about a 45 degree angle here. And I just left one spot over here. I'm gonna show you guys how good it works. I'm still gonna to have to go over it with sandpaper and get the rest off, but I'll show you guys how good this works. I mean, it still has some on there, but the bulk of it's gone. Makes my job easier. Wanted to share that. And I got the old truck positioned in the garage a little bit now. Uh, that's probably where it's going to sit when I spray it. But right now it's uh, sanding and bodywork. And then tonight, I'll, if I get that all done today, I will wash it off in the driveway. Clean the garage up and then move it back in here, shut the door and start taping it off, getting ready for paint. All right, we're back at the bed rails. I just uh, hit, the, hit it with a DA sander with 120 grit, took off all the remaining uh, adhesive from the tape, and I'm gonna follow it up with a 400 grit. And then after that, that's good, because these are getting recovered with uh, plastic, um, bed protectors, black ones. I'm kind of done with the diamond plate, but, and we'll do the other side next. All right, welcome back guys. Boy, if this isn't the nerd. Um, what I wanted to talk to you guys about is, I've seen these on clearance at Walmart, and I got the idea, not to wear on my head, but I'm wearing it right now because this side of the truck, kind of hard to see. I mean, you know, light, over here just shining up at an angle so I can get that reflection off the contour of that body there. And when I run across any dings where I've got my blue tape, like this here, um, obviously I can't sand over the top of that tape, so take yourself a silver sharpie, circle it and keep that dent visible no matter what you gotta do. It could be any color marker, tape, a paint marker would work good too, but the Sharpie tends to sand off pretty easy. Um, but this was a two pack at Walmart on clearance for eight bucks. So I seen a guy, I don't remember the channel, it's on YouTube, one of the hundreds I've watched before painting my truck. He has one of these on his paint cup and that's where the other one's at. And I didn't know what any of these did. I mean, I, I, it looked like a little GoPro, but um, the, the most handy one is is that flood beam because it the pattern I mean just this one light on my forehead it's hard to see on the on the camera there but it really illuminates that especially if you've already sanded it really brings that out and you can see where you've missed um, apparently uh, 45 is when my vision started to go so I'm 46 now so any little bit of light helps, especially on a black truck, but just wanted to share that with you guys. 
I um, also want to share what I'm using for a sander. Uh, it's just a regular Walmart Special DA. Um, six inch disc. Um, adhesive pad. And I'm running that through a water separator cord reel. Um, and a Harbor Freight uh, retractable hose reel, but I separate my water here, and I haven't hardlined my shop yet, but that's running back to, uh, I'll show you my compressor setup. Ugh. Tight squeeze there. Um, so yeah, that orange hose re comes back through here. Got a bunch of fans set up, keeping the dust out of my lungs. And we'll follow this back. And I've got uh, a Husky 60 gallon tucked back there in the corner. And what I wanted to show you was, um, so it's a 60 gallon. Where's the specs at? There we go. 10.3 CFM at 90 pounds and 11.8 at 45 to 40 pounds. But what I wanted to show you was I have a fan right here that's, it looks like a little turbo, but it's blowing straight across that cylinder head, uh, keeping this puppy cool when it's not running. So right now, I mean, it's, it's warm. I can keep my hand on it, but if I didn't have that fan, the only time that cylinder head's getting any air is when that compressor's running. So I don't know. I do a whole bunch of weird stuff like that. I always over-engineer things, and I had that little induction fan from an oven years ago laying around, and I figured, hey, I could put that to use, so it works out great. It's, it's quiet, and I really like how it performs, even if it's just mental. Um, I wanted to show you guys that. All right, let's get back to work. Another tip for you guys. Um, I bought this roll of 400 grit sandpaper. God, probably six months ago it's been in the garage. And it's a hell of a deal, I remember. I was like, wow, that's exactly what I need for that one day that I'm gonna paint the truck. This might even have been a couple years ago, but I've noticed that the adhesive has been in a roll for so long that it is stuck to the other layer pretty damn good and it's actually pulling the surface away when you take the sheets off. So what I've learned through trial and error is if you just heat it up a little bit, level one on a Harbor Freight heat gun, just go all the way around it until um, it's warm to the touch, maybe a little even hot, maybe even a little hot to the touch. It peels right off without taking that other layer with it. Um, no, another tip for you guys. We're still at it. Um, seen that one already. Got another one here I marked. It's funny because after I started sanding it, it's almost gone. But I'm still going to hit it with a little Bondo, sand it down. Um, I want her to be as good as I can get it. I don't want to regret not filling something. So, that's it. We're making a little progress. As long as I can keep my OCD at bay and just focus on the big job at hand. 
but I'm happy so far. We're, we're making good time. Today's Thursday. I planned on um, sanding all day today and all day tomorrow. So I have two full days I can take my time. And then Saturday morning, well tomorrow, Thursday, Friday afternoon, I want to make sure that it's washed and in the in the garage with the door shut. That way, Saturday morning, I can start applying base, and then, sorry, seal coat, base, and clear coat after that. So. Well, day two, um, done for the day. You might notice I've shaved. My uh, respirator wasn't sealing qu quite properly, so the hair was getting in the way, so I shaved it off so I get a better seal. Uh, let's show you the progress. Not much more from when you've seen before, but basically all this side is done. Except for a couple of rock chips here on this rear door. Um, around the around the windows, the edges, the, the very leading edge. I need to hand sand that. Um, fender's done. Hood is about 95% done. There's still a spot in the middle here. And when I wipe it off with a microfiber towel, it still feels rough. So I want to hit that again until it feels smooth. And the top hasn't been touched. It's the very top. Uh, this driver's side hasn't been touched much. I did a little bit where the emblems were. But uh, tomorrow, that's this job here. And uh, got to do the front bumper cap. And it's funny, I forgot all about the tailgate over here leaning against the wall. So that's tomorrow. And I'll have to put the tailgate back on so that I can pry this... Uh, diamond plate aluminum off of that NASA adhesive they have under there but that's it it's 9 o'clock p.m. Uh, I'm done for the damn war out so time to eat some dinner and call it a night hit this thing back in the morning see you guys tomorrow all right guys good morning it's uh about 10:35 on a Friday. This is day three of the truck painting project. Um, where I left off last night was basically the whole passenger side is done except a couple rock chips on the bottom. I got to sand around the doors or the, the edges of all the panels by hand. Got to do that front bumper cap. But. So today we are going to focus on the roof. Basically the rest of the truck. So the roof and the driver's side. And I want to redo this hood. I did learn something. When you're sanding, you can see I took this hood all the way down to the old primer. Um, I'm doing a 400 grit. And then I'm going to go a sealer. But if you look, it's hard to see it on the camera. But right in this area, you can see And it's even... It's even rough to the touch. Um, I'm going to have to take that down to metal. Because I believe the primer has failed. Uh, yeah, I can't see it on the camera. You might be able to see it. Yeah, you can see it there. See the little gouges and stuff. Another spot here. Where that primer is actually starting to fail. And I don't, I don't trust putting something over the top of that. But. So I'll take that down to metal and then uh, continue on.
Hi there. Well, it's got about, I don't know, 70% of the driver's side done. And I had to put the tailgate back on the truck because get that aluminum cap off the top. And to sand it's a lot easier. Kind of jumped the gun on pulling it off, but oh well. Uh, had another tip. So after you've done your sanding, um, take a microfiber towel. These seem to work pretty good. Soak it in water and uh, wipe down your area. And you will notice you'll see any spots that need to be re-sanded. You can see that shiny area there. Um, this helps that way you don't go wash the whole vehicle and then turns out you got to come back and touch up a lot of spots. But um, Obviously, I, I wiped this whole area thinking I sanded that whole spot but I clearly forgot a bunch. But, yep, just you know, fold the towel over, give it a wipe, and then flip the other side. Come back down, and you can flip the towel over again to the other side that hasn't been used. And now when that dries, if it's nice and hazy with no big shiny spots, I'll see exactly where I need to go back over. Well, I was afraid of this, but obviously I saved the best for last. I'm um, doing the top, and holy God, is it a bitch. So, um, I was noticing I was getting some rust here coming up through the black paint. So when I started sanding, I noticed that I would get down to the primer, then under the primer would be rust before the bare metal. So I'm taking that all down. You can see it there. Uh, let's turn some light on. See that rust underneath that primer. And eventually that's going to come up through the new paint. So I'm taking it down to bare metal. And I'm just chasing the rust out, out here. It's not rusting under the primer. So I'm just finding my edges. And all the way. And i got to do the passenger side after this. But back half of the cab had no rust just this front half but I'm gonna do this right the first time so I don't regret it but man it's just this part here is taking about an hour so jolly all right she's all washed with purple power and scrubbed with a green scotch bright equivalent to 600 grit all the nooks and crannies are clean and then I rinsed it with a turbo nozzle and a pressure washer so this is as good as I can do um, I've got the bumper cap sanded and it's still wet I wish it looked that good but it will tomorrow so it's sanded and washed as well I'm gonna spray that with base um, with sealer base and clear same time I do the tailgate and then I'll move those aside and spray the truck or I'll do it all in the same area maybe probably do that um, but right now it's time to go get some dinner she looks good throw some color on tomorrow and hopefully this paint job will last 10 more years. See you guys tomorrow. Morning. Today's the fun day, guys. Day four. Um, show you what we got. Garage is clean out in the, the Dodge is clean out in the driveway. We got to uh, 
Dust out the old garage bay, both sides. Wet the floors, blow off all the all the things on the wall so there's no setting dust and just hit it with the leaf blower is all I'm gonna do. Um, I got a projector I need to, it's up above that garage door that shines on this screen that comes down from the ceiling. I need to throw a bag over that. I don't want any paint fumes to get in it. Um, wash the floor and bring the old truck in, start masking it off and taping off all the spots that don't need to get painted. And uh, I've got some filters so I'm gonna put, I'm gonna do that whole single car garage door with air filters. And then under the double car door, I'm going to put these, uh, my floor fan. I borrowed one from work and I got another one from work over there. I'm gonna set those under the door, blowing air out and I'm a cardboard in between them so that this door will be a pretty solid seal and that most of the fresh air will come in from the single bay. It'll just big, it'll make a big loop, the air through this space so it'll evacuate any fumes. I hope, that's the plan. All right, stay tuned guys. All right, I've got the filters in the single bay door. Uh, that turned out pretty good. I had to put a little filler piece at the top, but okay, the outside here. So I'll be sucking air in there and exhausting on the bottom of this door. And get that going next. Actually, I got to get the truck in here. That'll be pretty good. So anything that gets on the paint is just going to be from what's in the garage, you know? Of course. <laughs> All right. Still day five. I think it's five, maybe four. Hell, I don't know. Um, before I've masked the truck off, I've got it in the garage all washed. And I can't find the damn bird's nest. But I, I made sure mama bird is gone. So the babies are going to get a nice little high. But what I wanted to share is when you guys are... Right now I'm wiping out the door... Uh, the door sills. I'm just taking my microfiber cloth, it's wet, wiping the whole inside. I didn't wash these last night, and after getting it in here, I realized how, well, they've already been wiped, but <clears throat> how dirty they were. So I just want to wipe those out, rinse in my rag, and while I'm doing this, I'm looking around, and don't be afraid to touch, so just keep feeling. Like if you wear that clear coat has failed before, I can't feel that. But if you could, hit it with some sandpaper right now. Um, you know, keep your eyes open as you walk around. Some of them look like you're like, oh my God, I'll be able to feel that. But I don't feel any of that. So that's all smooth. Um, here's a good example of one that I can feel. That right there. So I want to make sure that I hit that with some sandpaper. Otherwise... It'll stand out like a sore thumb, I'm sure. But, yeah, definitely right there. Um, that's it. And once again, uh, I don't know if I even mentioned this, but this is the first time I've ever painted any vehicles. I've painted small engine parts and stuff with the HVLP Harbor Freight Special. But this is the first time going this scale, full paint job. And originally, I was going to paint the top and the hood in one day and then paint the rest of the truck the next but you know what why not why why not live on the edge i'm gonna do it all in one day so i might paint some racing stripes on this bird if i find him but anyway that's it just wanted to, to let you guys know to to keep your eyes open as you're walking around if you're painting your own vehicle look for things that you don't know if you could if you could feel it feel it you know as dumb as that sounds, but hey, it's just a poor redneck trying to make a painting video. Once again, guys, like and subscribe. Um, I'm using 400 grit also. Is the last, is the, uh, oh, that's good. 400 grit, and then what's funny, so 
the top was sanded down to bare metal. Last last night I finished it. Um, today I looked at it this morning after washing it in the driveway, and I had rust all over the roof. And that new exposed metal sitting outside overnight just rusted. Just a nice little light surface layer. So I hit it with a uh, Scotch Brite pad and it came off, but it's already been washed. So now here I am with this Scotch Brite dust all over the roof. I got to wipe off. So this is just a hodgepodge of fun. Um, I know I'm going to regret this, but I'm not going to fill it. Those two little dim dimples right there. I guess I'll just call them battle wounds or handlebar marks. Who knows? Anyway, we're about to start masking off everything. I think I already said that, but yeah, we're going to start masking soon. And once again, today is Saturday. This is the spraying day. So stay tuned. Um, what I'm using today is a product from Amazon. Um, it's a six pack tape and plastic all in nice little rolls. Hopefully you can get a uh, good view of that description there. But a uh, buddy of mine that works for Chardon Labs, he's uh, in the same boat I am, Matt Needham. He's uh, painted his own vehicles in his garage and he recommended this stuff. So. It's really light. The bag is heavy because there's a lot of them in there. But for super thin mill plastic, I mean, that's pretty heavy for if it's super thin. And it's already got the painter's tape on one edge, which is nice. I'll do uh, around the windows and I'll use this everywhere. Looks like I got some little mini rolls there. Um, and then these larger ones, so let's see how this stuff goes. I'll link all this stuff in the description. All right, guys. First impressions of this stuff from Amazon. The uh, plastic and painter's tape. Pre-rolled devices, whatever. Holy crap, I'm in love with these. They are awesome. So I've got the undercarriage taped off. Um, all the way around. And I still got to do the windows. Um, sorry about the camera. I don't have a fancy GoPro. This is an old Samsung Galaxy S10. Amazing phone though. Um, so I still got to do this side. This undercarriage. And I'll show you how it looks underneath. It's, it's, it's wrapped all the way across. Um, if that bird falls out, he's going to land in a plastic catch net there. Um, inside the bed I um, just did the tops, the edge here. I'm not going to get too crazy obviously with spraying but eventually this top piece before I put the, the plastic covers on I'm going to rhino line this just rattle can rhino liner because I've got some rusting on this edge here underneath but the front header piece of the bed is already rhino lined. So I did tape that off, but and this stuff is amazing. You tape it on and then it just folds like four times. Super thin, you just grab it and it just comes out. You can see where it was folded. And then I just duct taped it here and there in places for when I'm spraying. I don't want the wafting of that air potentially flipping the plastic over onto the truck. Um, it's looking pretty badass. I love that stuff. Holy crap, it's cool. Way easier than rolling out plastic and taping it individually. But And next we're going to do the windows. So this kit comes with the big roll, which is amazingly huge. So I taped underneath the door frames there from there, and it rolled out probably past halfway of the truck underneath. So both the driver's side and passenger side are overlapped by like two feet and then taped underneath. So that's pretty big. 
very misleading. I was going to get two of those kits, but I think you could probably do like three school buses with two of those kits. Anyway, let's get this going. All right, so she's all masked off, wiped off with a wet rag, and I still need to wipe it down with prep before spraying the sealer. But I've got my bumper cover here, um, and I got my Harbor Freight spray gun holder clamped to the garage door bay there, or garage door track. I chose this area because it's got some uh, nice lighting. Uh, I'll show you what I'm using for a spray gun. Um, it's a Harbor Freight Special. It's not the Black Widow, but it's the uh, one right under it. Uh, I've got the uh, SPHTE 1.3. So since we're Spraying a sealer, not primer. A 1.3 is good from what I've been watching on YouTube. And I've got the uh, Universal Paint System kit to go on it. And I've already unboxed the gun. It's right here. So let's get it built and put the uh, water separator on it and get it hanging on the bracket. All right, I got the gun together. Got my regulator on, moisture filter, and the uh, cup adapter. And I've also adjusted the trigger based on the way the guy on Paint Society does. I don't remember his name, but. Um, and I also got one of these cups mixed up with some acetone in it, because I want to run some of that through my gun first. Just as a preventative maintenance of cleaning out any oils from the manufacturer. All right, I'm about to wipe down the truck with uh, the degreaser and pre-prep to clean anything off before spraying the uh, sealer. And for my sealer, I'm using the uh, Finish One FS510 with a slow reducer. I want to make sure it gives me enough time. I was kind of nervous on the temperature here. I also have a flexing additive that I'm going to add a little bit into the base, into the primer base and clear for this plastic bumper cover. It's real flexible. Um, probably don't need it, but I just want to be safe. And for the, um, sorry, for the ba base coat itself, got these here with a, a medium reducer and then the clear coat. Got a uh, slow hardener, MC-161 urethane clear. Uh, tack cloths for wiping in between coats. Um, cup, wipe for the cup, strainers, and rags to wipe the truck down right now before spraying primer, sealer. I mean. All right, so I'm gonna start wiping this truck down and I'll continue on after that. Okay, so the truck and everything about it has been wiped off with this grease and wax remover, the K901 from Amazon. And now I'm about to wipe the whole thing down with a tack cloth and then we're spraying some sealer. All right, first coat of sealer is down. Um, it's looking great. The bumper skin's done. Uh, this is the slow reducer, so it probably going to take, I don't know, 30 minutes to glaze over, but I'm really happy the way it's laying down. Um, yeah, it looks good. But this is the side that I just recently sprayed. So. I mean, she's pretty. This side's uh, 
pacing up on me. Um, top's done. Everything's got one good coat on it. And I'll let this haze up on me and then go at it again. Alright, so two coats of base. Yeah, two coats of sealer are on. Um, there's some dirt in it, I ain't gonna lie. Especially on the hood. Of course, that horizontal surface. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is I learned a trick from Paint Society again. Um, so it's it's pretty much dry to the touch now. Um, I take a Scotch Bright. I'm using a green one, and I'm just lightly rubbing it along the surface, and it's removing any any dirt that's just barely stuck there, and it's. Uh, not scratching the surface enough to where it's going to show up on the paint, I'm hoping. If it does, I'll just do a couple more coats, I guess. I don't know. But I got a water drip here. The first coat had this big drip of water that my gun shot out. But, yeah, there's some, some dirt here and there. I mean, it ain't perfect, guys, but I can tell you what, I'm pretty happy with it. So, I'm going to wipe the whole truck down with this Scotch-Brite. Then I'm probably going to shoot a coat of base. Not sealer, since I keep calling the sealer base. I'm going to shoot the base tonight. And so this, this reducer on the primer is a medium. I, I'm sorry, it's a slow. I should have went with a medium. Because it's 80 degrees today. And I ended up turning on my furnace up there. To heat this garage up to uh, I got it to 93 now. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, we're sitting at 93. So it's flashing off pretty good. And with a medium on the base, I'll uh, turn the fans on and cool the garage down a little bit more so it doesn't flash off so fast on me. So 80 is probably pretty good for a medium, but. All right, all right. I'm still scotch brighting it, but I'm also wet sanding some spots. When I come across some dirt that's a little too big for my liking, like this one here, I uh, dab it with a wet sponge, wet sand that puppy. Pushing very lightly. And it's gone. Got a dent here, but she's old. She ain't perfect. All right. She's got two coats of base. Uh, looks pretty good. I'm hoping that the clear hides a bunch, like everybody. Uh, but I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. There's some spots that are worse than others, but then there's some spots like this one here is my favorite fender. I mean, that's got a little bit of orange peel, but I, I think that's like a factory looking orange peel, which I'm happy with. Uh, a couple bugs landed on the hood as I'm painting, so once that dried, I, color, I uh, wet sanded it out. <laughs> this spot right here, I uh, got my shirt into the fender trying to get to the hood. So, um, I'm hoping where I've started and stopped, like you can see I did the door seam, touched up that in one. I hope all that hides with the clear door seams I got. I really hope so. I'll do two coats of clear tomorrow and go from there, but this looks like a metallic. But, uh, it's a nice, nice finish. Um, I actually kind of like a little bit of orange peel. It's weird. I guess that's the redneck in me, but I took my 18-volt uh, spotlight and walked around it and looked for spots I missed, and that's how I seen the, uh, the door seams. So another thing I'm hoping hides, the clear hides, is you could see 
the spider web scratches from the scotch bright pad um, I don't know if I got too aggressive with it but man I hope that hides with clear it's worse, worse in some spots but all right man, I'm tired as hell what time is it let's see all right almost oh there it is 138 in the morning Sunday morning so we're late Tops all done. Two coats up there, maybe even more than two. I don't have any runs. I'm actually proud of that. I thought I was going to get some runs. Even on the spot where I got my shirt into it, I really uh, beefed it up on there after that, trying to float that out, which it did a little bit. It looks a lot better. I think once that's dry, if I color sand it a little, and I've got some, uh, a little bit more base left to do some touch-ups. But... Good morning, guys. Welcome back. Today is the final day. Um, throw some clear on here in a little bit after my second cup of coffee. Oh, uh, this is a lot of work. Uh, hats off to you body shop guys, because, wow. I mean, I know you guys probably have help. My arms are cramping up. My back muscles wouldn't release. Um, we'll take her and see her all all dry. Um, so this morning I came out and checked it, and my little baby bird was on the ground right here looking at me. <laughs> so I caught his ass and put him in the flower bed out front, and Mama Bird was right there waiting for him. So. There's your happy ending on the bird story. But, so, we look pretty good. Uh, a little dusty. But, I'm just going to tap cloth it and spray some clear on. Um, these are the spots, like, I'm curious of how that's going to cover. Um, <clears throat> probably should color sand it. I don't know. But, I got a lot of dirt up there. I'm going to see if I can do something with that but I don't want to whatever I do I don't want to show up in the clear so um but it looks good I think I mean but I don't have the trained eye some of these spots are really bad I mean there's a lot of dirt right there like if I just hit that with some I think I can color sand that out maybe I'll try that all right, after my second cup of coffee and a, a protein bar, I'll be out here spraying. Right now, we're uh, it's a nice, comfortable 70 degrees. Yeah, sitting at 70. Um, I've got a slow hardener for the clear coat, so it'll give me some flow out time. I had some flow out time to it, I believe. Um, you know, I'll start with the top, work my way down. We'll get at it here in a little bit. Bye. All right, so right now I'm just walking the truck looking for uh, anything that sticks out like these little specks of dirt here. And what I'm doing is I'm taking a, uh, a wet microfiber, microfiber cloth and a piece of 600 wet as well. And then I'm just color sanding. I'm sorry. Yeah, wet sanding. Oh, I wet the area. And then hit it with some sandpaper. Until it feels smooth. Not pushing hard at all. Letting the sandpaper do the work. Wipe it. And I can still see it there. So. Only doing this on the parts that are going to be the most visible when you're walking up to the truck or anything that just catches my eye. I can hit now 
versus waiting till I spray the clear coat and then it's set. So that one, I've done these others already. I'm just going to continue going around the truck and looking for anything that just jumps out at me. Um, there's probably some down lower, but I'm not worrying about that. I'm just worrying about what catches your, <clears throat> what catches my eye. All right, I'll do the whole truck this way, and then I'll mix up some clear and start spraying. All right, guys, we have uh, wiped it all down with the K601. I think that's what this is, or K not KW901. Um, uh, one thing I did learn about this stuff is it actually removes a lot of the overspray that I was nervous about. Um, so, like on the roof where I did one half and then the other half. So, I'm happy now. I went ahead and kind of scuffed the whole truck basically with wet sanding it. You know, OCD took over and one little spot turned into another. But, um, so right now we're gonna tack cloth it and then start spraying some clear. One thing I did wanna say, uh, changing my respirator cartridges out. They're black now, they were white. But take care of your lungs, guys. Definitely wanna keep clean cartridges on your respirator. And if you have to shave like I did, I had a beard, I'd rather uh, grow my beard back than have something wrong with my lungs from breathing all this stuff in, so. All right, stay tuned. Clear is next. All right, first coat of clear is done. I gotta tell you, man, the clear is really fun. Uh, the bumper, that, and then that is, that is beautiful. A little bit of orange peel, but I would call it like a factory orange peel. But give you a little walks around here. Got a couple spots I'm not happy with. Um, where I got my shirt into it, I was able to color sand that out. But uh, for the most part, I mean the shine is outstanding. Like a little bit area here probably needs to, it'll cover up on the next coat. I'm really happy. And any imperfections, I could probably, uh, Wet sand them out and buff it. I still have my respirator on, that's why I sound like this. But, you know. All right, we'll lift this tack up and hit it again. All right, she's all done. Um, Two coats of clear, three on the top and the hood, and three on the tailgate. Um, she looks good. I got a couple error areas that I, it's my fault. Um, I got two runs on the other side. But, what the hell is Google doing? Got a big giant run right there. That's sagging right there. They all have to sand out and polish. Look at that. And another sag up top here. You know, I concentrated it all in one area. So. But man, she looks good. Surprising how straight this old truck has stayed over the years. So now I'll just let it dry up 